Okay, again, thanks so much everybody for coming today. And uh, we're gonna kick things off with a welcome from our great city manager who just signed a new three-year contract. Yay, John Jennings. Uh, Gina, thank you. That's actually news to the city councilors who are actually here. Um, that I've signed the contract. Um, I guess we don't need you to approve this on Monday, so we're good. Oh, it's in the paper, so we believe everything that's always in the paper. So, um, First of all, I want to welcome all of you. This is actually the... There are some things that I get to do every year that uh, are my favorites. One is the Employee of the Month. I love coming to your departments and surprising someone who has uh, been nominated by their peers to be the Employee of the Month. And then today, I, um, as I've repeatedly said, the greatest honor I have in my job is to work with all of you. The, um, the reason I decided to sign up again for another three years was because of the fact that I get to work with about 1,400 of the most professional and dedicated people um, that have ever walked the face of the earth. And I so greatly appreciate all that you do every single day. Um, and I think we still have a lot, a lot more to do. And that's the other reason I decided that I wanted to continue in this role. Um, that there is a lot of work that we've been able to do over the last two and a half years. A lot of amazing accomplishments that we've had as city staff. I think the city council has done a lot of amazing work over there over the last two and a half years on the policy side. But as us, as, as all of us as city staff, operationally, I think we have done a really an amazing job. Now, I'm the one that gets the headlines, good and bad. Um, but frankly, I'm also the one that gets credit for all the work that, all the great work that all of you do. So I want to make sure you know that I know that. That if it wasn't for you and what you do every single day, uh, we would never be able to run the city, run it as effectively as we do, and frankly, I think have one of the, the, the greatest cities in the entire United States. So I want to just thank all of you for everything you do. So thank you. I also wanted to uh, just uh, introduce, um, I think we only have one um, city councilor here. I wanted to introduce Councilor David Brennerman. Councilor Brennerman. And that is, uh, there are other councilors I know that I've spoken with that had wanted to be here, but, and maybe they'll be coming in, but um, uh, Councilor Brennerman has been here every year that I've been here. Count the councilor is unfortunately leaving us. Um, he is stepping down from the council. Um, actually, Monday is his last official meeting. Um, and I just wanted to take this moment because, you know, sometimes we don't always get these opportunities to thank people for their contributions. And so, Councillor Brennerman, on behalf of everyone in this room and all of the other city staff, we thank you for your support, for everything that you've done. This, you, as I said on the radio this morning, um, Councillor Brennerman in three years has left an amazing legacy. Um, all of this waterfront that you see out these windows are gonna radically change because of his leadership. You know, he was the, one of the primary drivers in bringing WEX to our waterfront and many other wonderful things. We've got some plans that um, some of you will see, or all of you will see on November 28th. We'll be unveiling some new visuals of what we think the Portland Ocean Terminal building could look like in the future to his committee. And so, Councilor Brennerman, thank you for everything. We wish you the best. We hope we see you often, except for unless you want to complain about something. Um, and I also just say that one of the great things about Councilor Brennerman, he does not use C-ClickFix. So, so thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, 
I also want to just take a moment to also thank the amazing, and I do, I want to stress the word, amazing Barron Center staff uh, for providing this amazing, this fantastic lunch. Anna Banana is right there. Anna, thank you. Milton, everybody, thank you. I don't know what happened to Mary. Oh, there's Mary. Uh, Mary, thank you for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mary is the, one of the only people that doesn't have ac that, that has unfettered access to my office because she just walks in. So, you know, she just there doesn't seem to be many. What? Yes, they do. Because we all know without them, where would you be, right? Yeah. Thank you all, Barron Center, for, uh, for everything that you do, not only today, but everything you always do. So, um, thank you. So now what I get to do is I get to actually recognize all of the, um, the, the committee, the event committee that put this wonderful uh, day, to, uh, day together. It takes an enormous amount of work um, to structure this, to bring all of you together for all of the, uh, the programs, all the certificates and so forth. So I was hoping that all of you could stand up and we could recognize you in unison, um, the event uh, planning committee. Uh, Gina Tapp, the HR department. Um, Kathy Vosmus, uh, the HR department. Carlene Kessler, the HR department. Uh, Mary McCarthy, the Barron Center. You're getting too much recognition, Mary. Um, Clarkson Woodward, <laughs> Woodward Police Department. I saw Clarkson. Oh, you keep moving on me, so you were over there. Um, Jessica Grondon, Kathy Williams from Public Works, Desiree Kelly, and Jen Hale from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Can we please give all of them a big round of applause? Uh, so first of all, uh, we're going to read the five-year recognition and then um, um, ask you to stand when your name is called. And then we'll, uh, we'll recognize you all together. So first, for five years of service to the city, uh, Rachel Allen from Parks, Recreation, and, and uh, Facilities, could you please stand when your name is called? Uh, Nathan Asdorian, f the Fire Department. Jeremiah Bartlett, Public Works. Robin Beeler Nichols from the Barron Center. Stephen Bishop from the Fire Department. Lucas Brundage from the Fire Department. Rosa uh, Canis from the Barron Center. Lindsay Chase from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Uh, Sarah Klukey from the Police Department. Uh, Kiana Cooper from the Barron Center. Lauren Co Cody from uh, Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Stacy Dan from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Okel, uh, Olga D Davidova. Uh, Davy Dova, <laughs> sorry, from the Barron Center. Sorry, Olga, if, if you're here. Uh, someone's laughing at me, so good for you. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I did get Andy Jigaleski right last year, so you have to give me some credit. So, uh, Dan, uh, Danielle Day, Public Works, Helen Donaldson, Planning, Kristen Dow, Public Health, uh, Jake Eb uh, Ebenhoe, the Fire Department, Royal Edgerly uh, the Third, the Fire Department, Lisa Edmond from the Barron Center, Mark Faulkner from the Fire Department, Sarah uh, Florent from the Police Department. Ron, Ronald Giraud uh, Jr. from the Fire Department, Lydia, Lydia Green from Fire, Jordan Hancock from Fire, Dwayne Hansen from Permitting and Inspections, um, uh, Abdur Rashid Hassan from the, the Barron Center, uh, Sean Hurley from the Police Department, Amanda Hutchins from Public Health, Nicholas Jewett from the Fire Department, Brenda Jones from the Barron Center, Carlton Jones from the Fire Department, Wayne Kane from the Barron Center, Dan Kazdoy from Fire, Spencer Keith from Social Services, Aaron Keller from uh, the Jetport, uh, Louis uh, Laf uh, Lafreniere, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> my man, um, Parks, Recreation and Facilities, I know you as Lou. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, Anthony Lanloy from the Barron Center, Jeff Levine from Planning, Galen Light from Fire, uh, Matthew Morrison from Police, CJ uh, Mastropoulos from Mastrophias, sorry, Parks Recreation Facilities, Kevin Murphy from Police, Paula Nason from the Barron Center, Sherlyn uh, Nemet from the Barron Center, Glenn Nielsen from Public Works, Stephanie Nowicki from the Fire Department, Dave Onos from Parks, Recreation and Facilities, uh, Davey uh, Perina from Finance, Eric Peterson from Parking, Linda Plord from Social Services, Matthew Ryder from the Police Department, Douglas Rutuma um, from the Social Services, Taylor Schneck from uh, Social Services, James, Jameson Seaman Sr from Public Works, Suna Shaw from the Police Department, uh, Nasser Shear from IT, Haley Sinet from the Barron Center, uh, Josh Tripp from the Fire Department, Mark Tweedy from the Fire Department, Kevin Westcott from the Fire Department, and Rob Wiener from Planning. So these are our, f we're recognizing for five years of service to the city. Please give them a big round of applause. Now we're going to uh, turn our attention to the 10-year uh, employees uh, for their years of service. Uh, amazing, actually, I, I hope to get to six years, so needless to say, those of you who were uh, here for 10 years and more, I take my hat off to all of you. So, First up is Deborah Adams from Public Health. Again, if you wouldn't mind standing and stay standing so we can recognize you. My old friend Tony Alves from Parks, Recreation and Facilities. Uh, Colin Ayer from the Fire Department, Amanda, Amanda Blanchard from the Barron Center, Aaron Bridges from the Fire Department, Julie Burns from the Bar Barron Center, Gre uh, Gang Chen from the Barron Center, James Klukey from Parks, Recreation and Facilities, Brian Cole from the Police Department, Josh Corbin from the Fire Department, Marianne uh, Curry from the Barron Center, Phil DePiro from Planning, Ralph Dobson from Public Works, Sean Donahue from Fire, Carla Don Donnelly from the Barron Center, Jeffrey uh, Druin from the Police Department, John Emerson from Public Works, Jean uh, Fal Falconieri from the Fire Department. I'm working on this stuff, I swear to you. Uh, Dylan Foster from the Barron Center, uh, Philip uh, Janet from Park, was it? Janak Gick. Gignac, okay, fantastic, Parks Recreation. Yeah, stand up three times, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Matthew Hawks, fire, fire. Robert Hawkins, police. Uh, Deborah Hoare from Social Services. Cyrilla Hodgkiss from the Barron Center. Wendell Howard from the fire, fire Department. Michael Kimball from Fire. Michael Lamb from Parks Recreation Facilities. Berner Bernice Landry from the Barron Center, Megan uh, Latelier from the Fire Department, Dustin Meserve from Public Works, Robert Miller from Police, Douglas Mor uh, Morin from permit Permitting and Inspections, uh, Mike Murray from the Executive Department, uh, Dave, Dave Pratt from Fire, Scott Rag, um, Rag, Rag from Public Works, Kevin Reddy from Parking, Anthony Russo from Fire, Crystal Seneca from the Barron Center, Maxine Sorois uh, from the Barron Center, Phil Skillings from Park Recreation and Facilities, Caroline St. Pierre from Fire, Carl Stevenson from Parks Recreation and Facilities, Daniel Svensson from the Fire Department, Daniel Thompson from the Fire Department, Jacob uh, Titcomb from the Police Department, Ryan Walsh from Fire, and that is it. So. Congratulations for our 10 year. We're moving on to 15 years of service. Again, I, you know, my hat's off to all of you. When we get to 40 years, I just kind of get down on both knees and just genuflect because it's just an amazing thing that you've spent all this time with the city. So 15 years of service. Camille Alden, Alden from the Public Works Department. Ethan Anderson from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. 
Joseph Bliss from the Police Department, Justin Bragnan from the Fire Department, Doris Calloway from the Police Department, David Carter from the Fire Department, Raymond Carey III from the Barron Center. Yeah, Ray. Remember, yeah, Ray? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, remember? Yeah. Ray was telling me we got to get rid of the city hospital uh, sign that's on the outside of the Barron Center because he's afraid that there's somebody's going to pull off the highway uh, that's in, in uh, you know, pregnant and is about to have a baby and he's going to have to deliver the child. So that's so. He's asked me to remove the sign off the Barron Center, so we'll try to do that for you, Ray. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Eli, Eli Chase from the Police Department, Dwayne Cody from Public Works, Shelly uh, Dalpert. Dial, yeah, this is why I should drink before this. Uh, Finance. Oh, Paul Decker from Fire. Uh, Lanita Dobson, or Lanny Dobson, as we all know her, uh, from uh, IT. Uh, Carolyn Dorr from I, the City Clerk's uh, Office. Uh, Joe Galuli Jr. from Public Works. Kelly Gorham from the Police Department. Peter Hodgkin uh, from Public Works. Melissa Huntley from Public Health. Uh, Kristen, Christine Hewitt. Uh, from the Barron Center, Casey Johnson from Fire, Christopher Cole from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities, Phil LaRue from the Fire Department, Christopher Lehman from Public Works, Todd Libby from the Fire Department, Frank Mackey from Public Works, Eric McCusker from the Police Department, Fred McKeeman Jr. from the Barron Center, uh, Dan Michaud from the Social Services, Chris Orff from Fire, Michael Sherb from Fire, David Shaw from Public Works, Julie Sullivan from the Executive Department, Ryan Thompson from Fire, Chris Tillotson from Fire, Kathleen Webb from Parks, Recreation and Facilities, Keith Willett from Fire, Camille, uh, Camilla Yanez from Barron Center, David York from the Barron Center, and finally David Young from the uh, Fire Department. Let's give them a big round of applause. We're going to move on to the 20 year recognition uh, for all of you who have worked for the city for, um, for at least 20 years of service. So again, I take my hat off to all of you for, for uh, putting up with certain individuals who live in our community. Um, and I won't name who they are because you know who they are, but for the last 20 years. So uh, Dodd, uh, Todd uh, Beaumier from the Social Services Office. John. Uh, Belanger from the Fire Department, Joe Bernard from Parks, Recreation and Facilities, David Co Cody from the Police Department, Bruce Sear from Fire, Ronald Durth from Fire, Shana DiMatteo, see I got it the second time, Barron Center, uh, Peter uh, Dubail, uh, Dubail from Public Works, uh, Tian Young from the Police Department, Tim Ferris from the Police Department, Robert Fogg from Public Works, Marie Francis from Parking, John Joyce from fi Fire, Lynn Clue Jordan uh, from Fire, Dennis Labonte from uh, the Jetport, Peter McFarlane, come on Peter, stand up, Parks, Recreation and Facilities, Robert uh, McPart McPartland from Fire, uh, don't block me from everybody. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're blocking me over there, so stand over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just exactly. <laughs> fe fe uh, sorry, Feely Monahan. I'm sorry, Feely. <laughs> uh, Feely uh, from uh, the IT office. Uh, Joe Montefusco from the Assessor's Office, uh, Troy Moon from the Executive uh, Office, Ben Noyes Jr. from uh, Police, uh, Shauna Ohm from Police, Mary Soschuk from the Police Department, uh, some guy named Mike Soschuk from the Police Department, uh, Robert Slaving, uh, Slaving from the Fire Department, Dan Small from the Fire Department, Randy Stewart from the Fire Department, Ben Wallace Jr. from the Fire Department, and Tim Welch from the Jetport, please give them a round of applause. So.
we're going to go um, and go forward with our 25-year recognition. Uh, actually, many of these uh, individuals, actually all of these individuals are really an incredible asset to the city. And I, I know one in particular or so, um, and she does a phenomenal job for me and, um, and for the entire executive office. But we're going to start with Vicki Allen from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Yeah, let's give the 25 years a clap. So, it's something for you five years to look forward to, that when you get to 25 years, we actually clap for you and, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, I totally messed this up, as usual. The 25 years need to come up and stand with me. You can bring your plants, yes. We'll put that right in front. Sonia Bean from the Executive Department. <laughs> this is the, literally the last thing that Sonia wants to do is stand near me, so. <laughs> Paul Bradbury from the Jetport. <laughs> Dwayne Curry from the Public Works Department. Hello. David Day from Public Works. <laughs> Gary Dobson from Public Works. Ed, Ed Dotty from uh, the Fire Department. Ed, come on up. <laughs> Catherine Gallagher from the Barron Center. Walter Gray, Public Works. Maureen Jordan, Barron Center. Lisa Labonte from the Barron Center. Eric LeMay from the IT Department. Andrew Lopez from Parking. <laughs> Judy O'Hara from the Barron Center. <laughs> Frank Rubino from the Public Works Department. <laughs> and finally, Paul Willie from the Parking Division. Let's give them a huge round of applause, please. We're, uh, we're going to move forward um, with uh, the 30, year, thir 30 years of service. Um, again, an amazing group of people as I read down the list. So we're going to start with Amy Adams from the Barron Center. Is Amy here? Amy Adams? Here. Amy, Amy's not here? So she kind of blew us off today. Is that what we're saying? Okay. I'll remember Amy then. For, you know. uh, Dan Boudelier from the IT department. <laughs> Sorry, Dan, you also have to stand up here. Margreta Cole from the Barron Center. <laughs> oh, she's providing security and care. Is that, is that our a superior care? I was going to say, who's providing the, uh, anyway. Um, sorry that uh, she couldn't make it, but please extend our best wishes to both Amy and uh, Margretta. Uh, Glenn Garland from the Fire Department. Tim, Tim Harmon from the Fire Department. Bruce Hebert from Public Works. I guess when you hit 25 years, or 30 years, you don't have to show up, so. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. <laughs> it's just, just us. Um. Michael Jones from the police department. Thank you. Thanks for showing up. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Leon McKenzie, Parks, Recreation, and Facilities.
Joseph Murphy from the fire department. I knew Joe was going to show up. That guy wouldn't miss a free meal. So thanks, Joe, for coming, coming today. Appreciate that. Now, his entire uh, station would not let Joe sit with them, so I don't know what that is all about. But um, Walter Phillips from Parks Recreation and Facilities. <laughs> Michelle Reynolds from IT. <laughs> Cynthia Rummery Taylor from the Police Department. Arthur Sewell from uh, the Jetport, or Artie, as we know him, Artie, Artie's not here, he doesn't like us either, okay, I keep these lists, just so everybody knows, so, you 20, 25 years, you know, so, anyway, Gary Shane from Pu Public Works, one of the best guys we have with the city, uh, Mark Spiller, Richard Sullivan from the fire department. <laughs> Kevin Thomas from Public Works. <laughs> Alfred uh, Treffery IV from Public Works. <laughs> and Robbie Walker from the Barron Center. Please give all of them a big, big round of applause, please. We're going to uh, have a picture taken down there again. So um, we're now going to move to the part of the program to where we're going to recognize the 35-year uh, employees and the 40-year employees. Um, wow, that's nice. Um, and. Um, during, during this process, we always ask the, uh, the department head to actually come up and speak um, about uh, these uh, amazing individuals. So I'd like to invite Dan Boudlier to come up, please, um, to recognize uh, one of his mem uh, staff members. Bob Tolliver. Stand up, Bob. <laughs> this won't be too painful. Bob, Bob started work with the city of Portland in September of 1982. And to uh, put that in perspective, Ronald Reagan was president. Walt Disney World opened a brand new theme area called Epcot, 1982. The Dow Jones average surged 43 points in November of 82 to close slightly over 1,000. Unbelievable. Also, in the world of technology, IBM introduced a new storage device called the double-sided diskette. <laughs> By comparison, an average iPhone today holds 20,000 of these. So pretty impressive in terms of the evolution of technology. Uh, there, there's one more item I'll speak to more toward the end, but something very important happened that year, too, in the world of um, networks. A, a protocol called TCP IP was invented in 1982 that would later be developed to be the thing that connects the whole Internet. And we'll, I'm going to speak to that just at the tail end. Bob and I were talking this morning about what was the very first project he had in technology. And what he had was a, a project of converting a data file from an 80-column punch card to something like this. Pretty amazing. It was actually the city savings bond file. So at one point, folks, your data was on something like this. A little scary. Now, Bob started as, that, um, as an application programmer in the 1980s when we were migrating to, a, to a, another level of mainframe, what a lot of folks don't know, and um, even IT, I don't think Bailey remembers, other than Bob and I, we were 
borrowing the system in Gardner. So Bob, for months on end, came to work, worked his eight to five, at five o'clock, drove to Gardner, and worked until after midnight. And he did that three and four nights a week for months. That's a, a huge accomplishment, and I don't know if we've ever recognized you for doing that. But it was one of the things that helped us migrate to a new mainframe. Bob's role in the 19, late 1980s changed from developing software to being a network engineer. Now, some of the things that most folks probably don't know is Bob worked with Time Warner for nearly five years. The result of that work is a fiber optic network that connects all of our buildings, all city buildings and all schools. A tremendous accomplishment that's been in place now, what, Bob, 20, 22 years? Amazing accomplishment. One of the things that Bob does too, as a network engineer, is he designs the wiring backbone, backbone that makes our phone systems work. So when you make a phone call, think of Bob. If it doesn't work, think of Bob. <laughs> now what I wanted to speak to just at the tail end was um, the internet. It has come into commercial use in our lifetime and that's, that's amazing to think about what happened. My first thought when somebody mentioned the internet was, was what? And I thought it was, a, it was a fad, it was similar to the hula hoop, it would, it would pass. And boy, was I wrong. So what I wanted to also recognize Bob for was taking us from our dial-up connection when we all had our AOL accounts to high-speed internet. And if I can trust Time Warner, or now Spectrum, on the 29th of November, our internet speed for everyone will increase by a factor of 10. So that's a very welcome news for our uh, where's Jessica, who complains to me constantly about internet speed? One thing I wanted to touch on at the tail end, as I close out my remarks, was really at the five-year folks. One of the things that will happen over time is you will realize that we're all a family. In 35 years of working with Bob, that's roughly 72,000 72, hours I've spent with that guy. You cannot spend that time together without being some type of an extended family. And it's, I, I think that's true for everyone here in the departments, especially as we approach the, the 20, 25, 35, 40 years. That's an amazing accomplishment. So Bob, thank you very much for everything that you've done. So, uh, Bob. Just on my, uh, for me, thank you so much for your years of service and all you do for the city. So thank you, Bob. Um, now I'd like to introduce my very good friend, uh, Sally DeLuca. Sally, it feels, yeah, we're best, B, what is it, BFF? Is that right? Um, oh. This could take a half hour. She hugs everybody. So anyway. I just need to thank him for not picking me last. Oh, yes, absolutely. Sally, remember, you got two minutes. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, Denise Macaronis, could you come on up? Thank you. <laughs> so um, Denise is proof that um, big things come in small packages. And that's why I needed her to be here with me. So she actually has high heels on today, which, <laughs> and, and before, when we sat down, she said something quite interesting to me, and I want her to tell you about what you look like, what she looked like when she started here. I was tall, thin, and no gray hair. <laughs> I couldn't say that. <laughs> um, back in the 1970s, the city built uh, two community center schools, one at Riverton and one at Reiki, and those folks that, that did that were pretty brilliant, actually, I, I think, because they built a school and a community center with large gymnasiums, swimming pools. They had health centers and dental centers and um, libraries. So it was a really full-service, one-stop shop. And that's actually where Denise started, was in the Health and Human Services Department. So she worked there for many years. 
as a dental hygienist and helped kids um, have pearly white teeth. And back then, I was reminded that we didn't have fluoride in the water, so uh, Denise was part of making sure that the kids got daily fluoride tablets. Um, and then Denise moved over to um, Parks, Rec, and Facilities, Parks and Rec at the time in 1990. Um, not many of us can say that we take a boat to get to work, but Denise does have to take a boat because she is our Peaks Island Community Center Coordinator, and she has provided services out there on Peaks Island for 27 years. So I, I often tease her that she's a true islander, and she accepts that as a compliment, which is good for both of us. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, in 1997, Denise was instrumental in our department, um, and she started one of the first friends groups, and it was Friends of Riverton Trolley Park. And for those of you who don't know, Denise loves to talk about the history of the Riverton Trolley Park. And um, I wrote it down so I, I didn't screw it up. <laughs> the park was in place in the late 1800s, and this is over on the corner of Riverside Street and Forest Avenue. That's where the Riverton Trolley Park was. And a trolley moved folks from downtown Portland out there every weekend. And I hope John's listening, because this, this is his kind of thing, iconic stuff. Um, there was a 30-acre playground for adults and families. There was a park casino that overlooked the river, a dining room, and a dance hall. It was quite the place to be on the weekends. There was an outdoor theater that seated over 2,500 people. There was a boathouse with canoes, a trout pond, and picnic grounds. The invention and popularity of cars and World War I put an end to the fun because nobody needed to be on the trolley anymore. But Denise makes sure that we all know the history of the park and keeps it alive for all of us and has led guided tours of the park history and helped raise money for restoration so that future generations will know um, the exciting place that it was many years ago. This, I'm so, this is so hard, my main accent. I've been practicing this. It's so hard to screw this up. If you're a stressed out person, Denise has this unique ability to teach. <laughs> it's laughter yoga. And I kept wanting to do it opposite. Laughter yoga. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so if you ever want to know about laughter yoga, she's the person to teach you and it will help you de-stress. Um, we couldn't be more proud to honor Denise here for her 35 years and to call her a public servant. Thank you, Denise. Uh, now I'd like to ask uh, Chief uh, Mike Soschuk to come to the podium uh, to recognize um, uh, one of his staff members as well. All right, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, everybody. Thanks for all that you do on behalf of the city every day. No matter you're here uh, two days or 40 years, uh, we certainly appreciate that. But I'm going to ask Randy Richardson to uh, step up to the podium, help me out for 35 years of service. Randy's joined here today by his wife, Kathy, and I would say the uh, best smile in the room, Maisie, his granddaughter is here. She'll be two in June. Uh, she's a cutie over on the, in the end over there. If she got any of that Tootsie Roll pop on you, we apologize. She's having a good time. And, uh, and definitely tearing it up. So um, I say acknowledge their presence, uh, certainly, because 35 years in service of the city, I can certainly say 35 years in a police department uh, is forever. And that means there's a lot of long days and nights away from your family, just like many of you, uh, as we responded to that last storm and other things, there's a lot of folks that are away from their family. So thank you uh, to Kathy for sure, and Maisie for the last 18 months or so for hanging in there uh, with granddad uh, being away. So a little bit about Randy. Uh, again, a cop math would say he started in 82. That's 35 years. Um, and uh, he started with uh, $5.30 an hour. Uh, and we openly joke 35 years in, he's up to 610. Um, <laughs> so uh, he's doing pretty well. He's doing pretty well. We like that. Uh, he knew what he wanted early on. Uh, Randy's been on Peaks Island as a police officer since about 1984. So if you can imagine uh, 33 years of service on Peaks Island, and what you may or not, may not know is that uh, for years and years, officers have been triple trained. So they're police, fire, and EMS 
Uh, we're currently partnered up with our brothers and sisters from the fire department out there, but for years it was two police officers and a bunch of different things. So it's the traditional community policing concept. You literally know everybody's name and you know 15 generations of their families. Uh, Randy knows everybody out there. He does an incredible job uh, on behalf of Peaks Island. It's very fitting. We can see his patrol area from here. Uh, so it's a pretty nice day uh, all the way around for Randy's service. Uh, he's also been on the dive team uh, for a long time uh, with us. Uh, and while he's done 35 years, uh, there's also common knowledge that Randy has never in his entire life turned down an overtime job. Never in his entire life has he turned down an overtime job. So that's 35 years, which really mean about 93 years in service if we counted up uh, the actual work hours that he's done uh, on behalf of the city. Uh, but I just want to think that if, if 33 years on the mean streets of Peaks Island, you would think maybe he's retired in place, right? Um, I'll tell you an example from uh, 2015, uh, which is pretty telling, and it, it was, again, working with the fire department. Captain Chris Thompson had uh, written me a letter about Randy. An 11-year-old girl had f uh, fallen out of a tree and onto some rocks on Peaks Island, uh, you know, the big style boulders that they have out there uh, around the beaches, and she got really banged up. And she had broken her back. They thought maybe she punctured a lung, uh, and they were really concerned, obviously, about her welfare. Uh, so Chris and Randy were crawling over the rocks to try to get her out from a couple of boulders out there, uh, while another officer is calling in boats to try to get her off the beach because they didn't think that they could put her on a backboard and carry her out of there. Uh, ultimately, uh, they, Randy assists to get her uh, from where she was wrapped around a boulder, put on a backboard. Randy ends up wading into the, the ocean and guiding a boat in to the beach area so that they could get uh, this backboard on the front of that boat and get out of there. So he's literally gun belt, uniform, the whole nine yards. Uh, and he goes out to his waist and he's bringing a boat in, holds the boat. They end up putting the backboard on, on that boat and that young lady went off to the hospital for treatment. Uh, so that happened 33 years into a 35 year career. Uh, so that tells you who Randy Richardson is on behalf of the city of Portland and we certainly thank him for his service. Thank you. Um, Don Stiles, Don, do you mind joining, coming up? So this is Cindy Pebanito's 35th year with the city. And as you can tell, she joined her when she was in high school, literally. She came to work for us, and I think Mary was the first person who she began working, working for. So, um, so you started out being trained well. Um, in Cindy's time, she spent most of her career at the, at the Barron Center in a variety of jobs. And everyone that we talked to there had, this, had similar things to say about Cindy, that she was hardworking, she was a pleasure to work with, she was a great team player, and that she was always helpful to anyone who came into the office when she was working in the business office. Um, the residents come in and, uh, and access their accounts and that a lot of times they, they need some help in doing that and everyone unanimously said what a great help Cindy was to them. Um, she's moved over to social services for the last few years of her career with the city and they again had similar things to say. There are a couple of things that stand out for me about Cindy, and I probably should also say Cindy is now, um, in addition to her, her position with social services, is the president of, of the SEBA union. And so she, <laughs> we have some members here. Cindy continues to help people through her work with um, both, both the city and with the SEBA union. Um, one of the things that I found especially compelling in the description of, of Cindy was her kindness. And, you know, today that is such uh, a unique and necessary and needed um, trait to have is to be kind. And that was one of the, the descriptions that staff used to describe Cindy was her kindness and her willingness to help in any time and, and one staff actually said, Cindy's the person who would give you the shirt off her back. And you know, that's a great tribute. I found out that Cindy has a great sense of humor as well during um, Karen Percival, who is the, the um, administrator at the Barron Center for over 30 years. Uh, we were there and, and John and, and one of the city councilors were, gave a, a really great 
speech about Karen and several other people were giving, giving wonderful tributes and all of a sudden the CB union and another union showed up and they handed her a grievance. And everyone's thinking, oh my gosh, what did Karen do now? And, and it was a grievance because they didn't want her to leave. So they were give, filed the staff and the unions filed a grievance to prevent her from retiring. So I found that that was, that was a great tribute to Karen as well and also showed Cindy's great sense of humor which has helped her in doing the hard work she's done all these years. So I really appreciate your hard work, Cindy, and you're a true city city worker. Thank you. Uh, Cindy, congratulations uh, on everything. And um, I actually wanted to ask Chris Branch if Chris could come up and join or take over the podium. And Chris, please try to remember there is a two minute. No, I'm kidding. Um, you take as long as you want. Thank you. We have no place else to be. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, they asked me to come up here and recognize some guy named Thomas Higgins this morning, but I don't really know anybody by that name. So I want Tommy Higgins to come on down here. See, we, we got matching uniforms on today, you notice. So. Tommy was hired by the City of Portland as an Equipment Operator 1 in the Parks Department in December of 82, which was then the Parks and Public Works Department. He became a foreman in Public Works in 96 and received Employee of the Month in November of 98. He then went on to become a Public Works Supervisor in April of 99 and received the Department's ACE Award in July of 2004, Director's Award in July of 2006, and was part of the team award in July of 2006, and again in September of 2016. As most of you know, Tommy has been Portland's downtown district supervisor since October of 2003. He knows the downtown area very well and how to keep the area clean for our pedestrians and visitors who come to the downtown area. He works closely with the Portland downtown district office staff, which is not a simple task, I will say and events planner Ted Musgraves and always knows what event is coming up next and how to plan for it from start to finish. For many years he's worked with the city's popular Old Port Festival that brings thousands of people to the Old Port overseeing the setup and clean up rain and shine. He has been involved with the city's tree lighting ceremonies that again bring thousands to the downtown. He's always responsive to customers in the downtown area and oversees the winter ops to take place keeping sidewalks open for pedestrians and businesses. He always works very hard to keep Portland's downtown number one for all to enjoy and his dedication truly contributes to our success. Thank you for your 35 years of service with the Portland. You've been greatly appreciated and I've been with the city now for about 18 months. I'm a newbie but in 18 months I've not heard one negative comment about Tommy since I've been here. Everything I hear is very positive. His customer skills are excellent. Congratulations, Tom. Congratulations, Tommy. We appreciate everything you and the entire crew, the crew does as well, so thank you. Um, I, I wanted to ask the, um, the Chief Jackson to come up. Uh, the Chief is going to talk about uh, two of uh, his employees and um, recognizing them for their 40 years of service. So, Chief. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. First, I too want to just congratulate everybody and uh, thank everybody for your years of service and, and uh, just, to, just to say that how proud I am to be the fire chief and to represent 228 of the most amazing men and women um, in, our, in this department and I think they're certainly second to none in the world. Uh, and, I, and I also just want to thank all of you for <clears throat> all that you do to support our mission and what we do in the city. There's, we interact with so many departments at, at so many different levels and I, I really just can't thank you all enough for for the support you give us to be able to give service to our citizens and our visitors. At this point, I'd like to bring up uh, Frank Navarro and Firefighter Tim Kane. So I'm going to start first and talk a little bit about Frankie Navarro. Um, I don't suppose anybody here knows Frankie, huh? 
I do have to say that you're looking really sharp today. If I'd only known, if I'd only known that you could dress up like this in wonderful social clothes, I'd have changed the uniform policy 20 years ago because I don't think I've ever seen you wear a uniform at the airport. <laughs> Mostly because he's working out. If anybody knows Frankie, he's probably the poster child for physical fitness. And I don't think I've known anybody that's as good physical condition at any age than Frankie Navarro. If there's one thing he's always doing is certainly working out and he has spent a lot, a lot of his life uh, teaching a lot of other people about exercise and the importance of that. Um, a little uncanny at times, a um, little challenging at times. I try to uh, take the phone calls, a <laughs> little bit of <laughs> stop laughing <laughs> at ease. But uh, so Frankie came in the fight department in November of 1977. And if anybody that's old enough to remember that, disco was all the craze at the time. And for those of you that are really young, we can tell you what disco was all about. It lasted 40 minutes. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure you look good in your leisure suit, Frank, back then. Uh, and when Frankie started his career, uh, in, uh, in all the men and women that came in at that time, the city of Portland was still experiencing uh, a lot of fires. We, we, the city was still burning. We really came out of the 1960s and all that went on in the country and the riots um, experienced here. We had a lot of really dangerous events and things that happened and dangerous fires. We have, we have as you know, a very old city. Uh, we've been here a long time. The city's got a huge history of major fires, and both of these gentlemen uh, were here and, and really went through a lot in those days. And Frankie was serving on two of the, two, uh, most of the busy companies right on Congress Street during his early career. Later on in life, I think he decided that one way he was definitely going to uh, extend this lovely career here was he, he uh, had worked out to the airport. I think he liked it and uh, eventually stayed there. He's been working at the airport for quite some time. Uh, he's the senior firefighter out there. Um, as I was trying to put in this speech together, though, I ran out of adjectives. I guess I'm going to just leave it by saying Frankie Navarro is certainly one of the most unique people I've ever known. True? <laughs> Although we'll tell you, I'm not going to tell you how old he is, but he carries an AARP card, he's getting his Medicaid every week, and he's collecting Social Security while he's still working, but other than that, he's doing great. Um, <laughs> I was actually, I, I will say in my time, I've been um, also impressed that even as uh, Frankie has worked here for 40 years, um, and this is, this is such a challenging career, there's a reason why firefighters have a special retirement plan. Normally after 25 years, you're so beat up physically and mentally, you can't do this job. And for these two gentlemen to even last 40 years and continue to serve here is amazing. After knowing what they certainly went through in their early careers when we, most firefighters were just starting to wonder about what wearing an air pack was all about. And uh, they have endured, and Frankie certainly has endured. And, and even not that long ago, he was still taking overtimes and coming in town and riding on the trucks and, and doing the job. And Frankie, on behalf of the citizens of Portland, certainly all of us, and myself as a chief, uh, we just thank you for the 40 years of service and congratulations. Timmy Kane, Timmy, I don't know how you got 40 years and you're still younger looking than me. <laughs> Keeping all your hair, I'm getting really jealous here. Timmy and uh, Frankie came, both came in in November of 1977 and certainly, again, uh, the time that they were serving was just amazing back then. The city was just experiencing so many fires and they were extremely busy. At that time also, we had never heard the word hazmat. Most of the firefighters didn't do EMS. We never heard everything like confined space, bloodborne pathogens, opioid o overdoses. None of that was going on. And all of that now is all part of what we do. And Timmy is still here today. He's always one of the first ones to step up and, and do what needs to be done. He's always been one to take on whatever those new challenges are. And he is certainly, and I appreciate the fact that as a senior firefighter in the department, he is always making sure uh, to work with the younger firefighters that are in here and passing on that knowledge and experience uh, so that they, they too will, uh, will be safe um, and that they will be able to endure in this job. And, Timmy's another one who is just amazing that, to do 40 years here and continue to do this. He's really been the firefighter's firefighter. He's still, even now, working on Ladder 6 out of Bram Hall, one of the busiest companies in the, in the city. And he's been there, Ladder 6? Ladder 6, 35 years? Wow. Holy smokes, Tim. <laughs> you do realize we had a bid system, right? You could leave? <laughs> yeah. 
Probably, I will say, unfortunately, I don't know about poor Frankie. I don't think he's ever leaving, but Timmy, I think, is getting close, and uh, they will be greatly missed. But uh, the, the one thing I've admired with Tim is certainly that he has shared all that knowledge and experience. He was a huge mentor in my time I've been here. I, I would go to a fire or an emergency any day with Timmy Kane, and I know that he's, both of these gentlemen are highly respected. And Timmy, again, on behalf of the citizens and certainly the city of Portland and myself, we just can't thank you enough for your 40 years of service, and congratulations. Um, I wanted to uh, invite um, Chris Branch uh, to come up, back up and join me um, to speak about um, one of our the truly great work, workers who, um, staff members who worked for the city um, for 40 years. Uh, unfortunately, he's not with us um, any longer, but we are honored to have his family here with us. So we're hoping that you could come up and be with us uh, if, that was, if that's okay with all of you. Although Jim's not here today to receive the award, Jim was a great employee for the city of Portland. He was hired as a laborer in July of 1977 after he served as a proud member of the U.S. Marines. He was promoted to assistant dispatcher in 1977 and promoted to supervisor in September of 1984. He received the department's ACE Award in July of 2004 and was part of Team Award in July of 2005 in September of 2016. He worked as a weekend night dispatcher during the winter months for several years and provided consistent and competent duties during this assignment. He helped to establish the Arbor Street complex when the sewer division really moved into their own location. He was incredibly dedicated, conscientious, and provided steadfast services to the water resourcing division who approached every task with a no-nonsense, common sense attitude. He was known as the de facto historian of all things related to Portland wastewater. He maintained a pristine attendance record over the 40 years he served with the city. He quietly served as a benefactor for the Loring Memorial Site in the root cellar on Washington Avenue. Over the last few years, as the de facto historian for the sewer in Portland, he helped bring the Water Resources Division into the 21st century as part of our asset management work with his great knowledge of the sewer and storm drain systems in the city of Portland. Jim remained, as I said, a dedicated employee right up until he passed away on September 14, 2017. He will be sadly missed by all his coworkers, friends, and of course his family. It will be almost impossible to replace the knowledge he had of our sewer system. Thank you, Linda and family, for allowing Jim to dedicate 40 years of his life to the city of Portland. We've actually added a few awards this year, um, awards that um, I think represent what all of us are trying to accomplish here uh, in the city, certainly during my tenure. Um, and so, we, so I wanted to recognize what these awards are, what they mean, and certainly, and then of course we have the Ganley Award at the end. But. Um, the department heads, the, all the directors uh, of the departments, of the various departments in the city helped me and uh, Anita, Anita, I was wondering where you, what happened to you, um, to determine the winners of these awards. So please know that the, the, the folks who won these awards, that the management of the city feels very strongly um, for, of, of uh, appreciate and feel strongly about the work that you do every single day. So. Chief Sauschuk, do you mind coming up? Clarkson, could you please join us? I don't 
Don't bite. Um, so this award is the Customer Service Champion Award, um, and she was nominated by Chief Soschuk. And I just wanted to read a, a little bit from his uh, application of nominating uh, Clarkson. Clarkson is a public service professional who truly personifies the qualities that make this award so special. She serves as a human resource subject matter expert for our department's 225 employees. Her passion for the position and her compassion for others make her a key component of the police department's management team and a constant source of support and guidance for the members of the PD family. Clarkson is routine, routinely available at all times of the day and night to answer health care questions for an injured officer or to respond directly to the station to assist in the aftermath of a traumatic incident like a blood exposure or an officer involved in a shooting. Clarkson has been an integral part of our department's peer support team for the chief's 19-year career. And without her commitment to the team and the city of Portland, our officers would have, or the, the, the Portland Police Department officers would have suffered needlessly in the face of various tragedies. Clarkson has used her finely tuned organizational skills to streamline the hiring process of the police officers and dispatchers. This new, pro new process made our department far more competitive with other area agencies and allow us, allows us to add the flexibility to truly pick the best of the best. Clarkson, congratulations. Chief, do you want to say anything? So uh, a few years ago, we gave Clarkson the Civilian of the Year at the Police Department. Uh, and we did it actually in this setting, if I remember correctly. And at that time, Clarkson's heavily involved in that process. Uh, so I had to lie to her for months. Um, actually, we had to put a ghost person that we said was going to win it and did a whole thing. So this was much easier uh, to fool her this time around. Uh, Clarkson is an incredible person. Uh, I'm blessed at the police department. I don't have one right arm. I've got a hundred of them over there that uh, keep me out of trouble. Uh, but talk about internal customer service and the way she takes care of our family and external customer service. Uh, Clarkson is the first person in many cases that outside entities and individuals have contact with. Uh, they may be the only contact they have with the Portland Police Department. Um, she's a true professional. She's also an incredible human being uh, that we love very much. Um, so thank you very much for everything, and she's going to hate me for this. <laughs> thank you. So as, as we just uh, mess, uh, mentioned, customer service is a huge priority uh, for us um, as a city. Um, and so Clarkson obviously was a, a great recipient. But we also have another award this year called the Innovator of the Year Award. And anyone who has worked with me, knows me, or sat in a meeting with me knows that I'm a bit of a tech geek. And I love, I love technology, I love moving us forward, I love new ideas. I've been going around meeting with various departments and fire stations and, and uh, divisions and so forth, asking for your ideas on how we can move the city forward um, to innovate more effectively. So, um, Nancy Gallinero, do you mind joining me up here, please? Oh, there's Nancy. So, the Innovator of the Year Award, uh, the first annual Innovator of the Year Award, goes to Jessica Gooch. Jessica. <laughs> Jessica was lured here under false pretenses. Um, so, she did get a free lunch. Come on over, Jessica. Um, so Jessica is the asset manager for water resources. She has been responsible for the implementation of our asset management system within the water resources division. As some of you know, several years ago, water resources was so bad on the operations side, the US EPA made the city enter into a consent agreement. Due to the efforts of Jessica, our program has turned, into, has turned around so much that uh, Water Resources was awarded this year's Asset Management Award by the New England Water Environment Federation, which is a huge award, by the way, uh, the professional organization for the storm and wastewater industry. Our mapping and databases have gone from near zero to one of the best in the state in just a few years. She has, uh, she has the crews using tablets to look up information and record data. It is truly an amazing accomplishment. 
Jessica has, has been and continues to be a support for GIS here in, in, in public works and engineering as well as City Hall GIS. She has presented papers for GIS organizations, working groups, Maine Water Environment and the New England Water uh, Environment Associations, as well as the Maine Stormwater Conference. She has accomplished much in her two years as asset manager and has done so while being an excellent leader and coach to her young staff. Nancy, would you like to say anything? I wasn't expecting to get to say anything, but um, it's easy. Uh, we're just so incredibly blessed um, at Water Resources to have the talent that we have. We really started with a blank slate and Jess had to come in and get us all up to speed on everything, getting our assets in the system and just getting us set up for the future. And she's done so very independently and been able to go out and tell the country, essentially, across the country about what we're doing. And that's why we're getting an award is because she's willing to get up and talk about what we're doing. And uh, so we're really proud of her and proud of her team. So thank you, Jess. Um, this person may hate me for life by doing this to her. But Anita Lachance, could you please join me? He's right about that. <laughs> Did you hear that? He's right about that. That she's going to hate me for life. Oh, it is beautiful. And it has your name on it. So uh, we're also today establishing another award, the uh, Municipal Leadership Award. And Anita will be the uh, first uh, recipient of the Municipal Leadership Award. I've known uh, Anita since I first came to Portland. I came here to start a basketball team that eventually became the Maine Red Claws. I had to negotiate with this tough negotiator uh, to uh, do the lease agreement at the expo and many other things, and she was tough. And frankly, I admired that. And, um, and we have, over the years, become very good friends. And so when I talked to the city council about becoming the city manager, um, there was only one person that I needed beside me every step of the way, and that was Anita. Anita is brilliant at municipal government, and her years of service to this city are unparalleled. She helps in every conceivable way, from the budget, uh, from Parks and Recreation, of course, which she led for many years. Um, she was an intern for the city, uh, was it 38 years ago? 38 years ago? More or less. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, so, I, there is no way I could do the job that I do every single day without Anita. Unfortunately for me, and I think for the city, she's decided that she is going to retire. Uh, in July of next year. And so it is going to be a huge um, loss for the city, for me, um, and I think, I think she's going to realize for her as well, as, as much as um, she may think otherwise right now. But Anita, on behalf of all of us in this room, on behalf of all the other staff that work for this city, and who have worked in the city in the, in the past, and the city councilors who you served with for decades, thank you for everything. I'll promise that I wouldn't get a going away party, so I guess this is the payback for that. You did a really good job of keeping a secret, and you're right, I will lose something when I leave. I'm going to miss a lot of people, but I'm not going very far, so thank you. So, um, as is tradition, the, uh, the award that we save till the very last is um, the, uh, the Robert B. Ganley Public Service Award. Um, I did not have the honor of ever meeting Mr. Ganley, but 
Um, my understanding and certainly the stories that have been passed down to me by both his family and, um, um, and all of you, uh, he was quite a remarkable person. He cared passionately about all the people who worked for the city. He was tough, which I greatly appreciate, and um, he was no nonsense. And so this award, I think, is the most prominent award that we give every single year. Um, and so um, we are making this award today, and I'm going to ask Chris Branch to present the award. This year's winner of the Ganley Award is Kevin Austin, the fleet manager for the Public Works Department. Kevin, can you come up, please? Kevin started pretty low down on the totem pole when he got here, started out as an account clerk and moved up into the construction company and then over into fleet where he worked his way up to the current fleet manager's position. A few comments from the nomination of the person who submitted Kevin for the Ganley Award. From the minute Kevin walks in his office, he has people, phone calls and emails to address. He deals with so many people coming at him all at once with the most utmost professionalism. Kevin's daily job goes anywhere from purchasing expensive equipment to walking down to the pumps with a coworker because their gas key won't work. It's happened to me. <laughs> the service Kevin provides for his coworkers, employees, supervisors, salesmen, and outside vendors never differs. They are all treated with respect. He wears so many hats across all departments. Without vehicle maintenance, the city of Portland would not have properly running vehicles to keep the city operating. This is what Kevin has to do every day, and he does it with a smile on his face. He is always willing to assist, and he does so with a cooperative, positive attitude. He is very knowledgeable and a valuable asset to the city. He keeps everybody rolling and happy with the fleet we have, especially considering the budget constraints he's up against. No matter what, he finds a way to make it work. He and his staff work tirelessly to keep equipment that should have been long ago retired up and running. Even though he doesn't have much interactions with the public, what he does behind the scenes benefits the public every day. Kevin embodies his description of Bob Ganley every day. He is behind the scenes doing good work that no one really sees, that everyone would miss if it were not being done. A couple of personal notes on Kevin. As I said earlier, I've been here about 18 months now. The one of the people that I have come to depend on for what they have to say to me is Kevin. When he talks to me about the CIP process, we have to be able to work with police and fire, parking, parks and rec to be able to put the vehicles into the CIP that they all need. Kevin is the one who does that work. It is an extremely difficult job and he keeps, although he gets accused on a regular basis of being prejudiced towards public works, I can tell you that's not the case. Uh, when I've tried to slip some things in, he said, no, we're not doing that. It's not a priority. So he tries to do the best that he can, gets the input from everybody, and does a great job. I've really enjoyed working with Kevin. I also enjoy, Kevin is currently building his own house. So uh, we talk a little bit about septic systems and uh, washouts and a few other things that have gone on there, and he's now working with us to do the fleet services expansion out of to, for the relocation out to 250 Kanko Road. I just want to say thanks to Kevin for his great work for the city of Portland. Thank you. Kevin, um, just on, my, on behalf of myself and um, the rest of the leadership of the city, thank you for keeping um, an amazing um, division running very, very smoothly. You and the entire crew at Fleet Services does just amazing job. In fact, it's oftentimes it's miraculous. Because we've neglected our fleet over the years, as many of you know, because you have to drive some of these antiquated uh, uh, vehicles that we're quickly trying to replace. So, Kevin, you and your entire team, they, you just do a phenomenal job, so thank you very much.
I did want to just mention, though, the selection committee um, is comprised of, of, of the previous award recipients, Keith Gattro from last year, Barbara Barheit, Mary McCarthy, Kevin Haley, Brad Bur Br Paul Bradbury, Mark Spiller, uh, Julia Glasick, and Kathy Alves, as well as the uh, HR staff of Gina Tapp and Carlene Kessler uh, and Jessica Grandin. Um, we received 15 nominations this year. Uh, they were all very, very worthy of the, of the award, but certainly Kevin uh, was selected to be the Ganley Award winner this year. So, so uh, do we have anything else? Any other business? Let me, you go ahead. Okay. Um, well, believe it or not, it's 1.46, and Kathy's timeline was had us ending at 1.45. So great job again, Kathy. Kathy Vosmos puts this all together. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for taking time out of your Friday to come um, honor all of, all of the great work that city employees do. And again, great, great, great lunch, um, Beer and Center staff. Thank you so much for doing that for us. Okay, thanks. Um, John's just going to say a few final words goodbye. No, he doesn't want to. Goodbye. Have a great weekend. Thanks for your time. <laughs>